Hey everybody. So I'm here with my 9 butt Max electric scooter. And today I'm gonna do a bit of a video comparing what it's like to compare the electric scooter with a commuter bike. Generally, uh, I just wanna give you an overview of after about 500 miles on the scooter, how I feel about commuting on it versus a bicycle. Uh, I rode about half of this in the winter, half of this in the summer, so I have a pretty good idea of how season affects it. And yeah, I just wanna give you an honest take on what I think about the scooter versus a bicycle uh, in terms of cost, safety, efficiency, and just, just generally how fun it is. Anyways, stick with me, and I'm gonna do this video starting with the bike portion. The scooter portion is gonna come second. So this is my Marin Nail Trail 29er and it's the bike I'm gonna be comparing against my scooter. Now I could compare against my road bike, but my road bike is a much more expensive bicycle. This was about $600 new when I bought it about three, four years ago, right before the pandemic, which puts it at about the same cost as the electric scooter. So I think it's a more fair comparison. So anyways, I'm gonna go out and ride on this and tell you my general thoughts about it as a commuter. So first I wanna detail what you might like about riding a bike for commuting. As stated, this is a mountain bike. It's not a commuter bike uh, and it's not a road bike. So in many ways, it's worse than those two genres of bike, but in many ways it's better. I commute on a mountain bike. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what I like about commuting on a mountain bike. Also, this bike's at a comparable price point to what I paid for the electric scooter. So I think it's a more fitting comparison. This mountain bike has been a great commuter for me for about three years before I even bought my electric scooter. So I know this thing in and out and much better than the scooter. Keep that in mind. The things I like about it for commuting are the wide tires. Uh, they're also very large at 29 inches. I can essentially ride over anything uh, that is in an urban setting and not end up breaking the bike or getting screwed up myself. Uh, additionally, if you're trying to lose weight, a bicycle is gonna be the better commuting tool for you. But additionally, as you see, I'm going really fast down this hill. Hopefully you can hear me, but that's uh, a bonus of the bike. You can go as fast down the hill as you want. The 9 bot max slows you down. And also, as you just saw, the brakes on this are way better than the 9 bot. If I was going that fast on the 9 bot, I don't know if between the regenerative braking and the handbrake, I'd be able to stop particularly well, especially not in the wet. Just something to keep in mind. All right, I'm gonna pedal less hard so I don't end up with a stitch. Additionally, I can replace every part of this bike. Uh, this bike is maintained 100% by me. I've broken a lot of stuff on it. And, you know, I've, I've been able to replace it myself. I haven't had to pay anyone to do electric work on my bike. Uh, that's, that's a big knock against an electric scooter for me is you're commuting on it and that commuting costs you a lot more than bike commuting does, which is definitely something to keep in mind, especially if you really don't have the money to pay to replace parts on a scooter that break. Most things on this bike that are susceptible to break, it's under a hundred dollar expense. And usually just requires a bit of manpower and like a $5 part. Um, I can go over huge bumps in the road in this thing. I mean, look at this. Those are probably two inch deep potholes and it didn't even phase the bike. Uh, on the electric scooter, I really don't think I could ride over those even at a slow speed. And uh, additionally, as I said earlier, you can brake a hell of a lot faster. So if I were just about to start commuting on two wheels, uh, even though it's more effort, even though you sweat, I definitely would recommend going for the bicycle. And additionally, as I'm about to do, you can really go anywhere you want on a bicycle. And that isn't limited by range or terrain. So not to be brash, and not to show off, but real talk, an electric scooter can't do what I'm about to do. So just watch. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> I'm trying. This would be impossible for any scooter. And it's not that hard. Heck, I can even take a bad line. 
and go over that rock. So additionally, and this is probably my final point, uh, a mountain bike or road bike or a hybrid, if you're in shape, it's gonna take you a lot farther than the range of an e-scooter will. You're not gonna be able to really <laughs> do touring on an e-scooter unless you have four hours between rides to charge. Um, it's just not feasible. It's just not practical. An e-scooter is a terrific tool from going throughout a city, but even 20 miles of range runs out fast. So in conclusion, riding the bike is a safe, cost-effective, and tried-and-true way to get to work that's still fun, and I still do about half the time, and it gives you fitness benefits, which riding an electric scooter, while convenient, simply does not. Uh, now I'm gonna go on to the electric scooter version of this video. So anyways, now I'm on my 9 butt Max. I've ridden about 500 miles on the thing. It's been a good electric scooter. I haven't had a single problem. Uh, haven't lost sealant in the tire. Haven't gotten any sort of a flat. And it hasn't stopped running for any reason whatsoever. And I've been riding it in most conditions. Although I will not recommend that you ride it in the rain, which is a significant knock against electric scooters is even the best of them, the 9 butt Max. If you ride it in rain enough, you're gonna have problems. Your wheel bearings are gonna go faster. Uh, your motor's probably gonna go faster. Um, and you might have to replace that. Perhaps it could damage your battery if you get water into it. Although I think that's possibly doubtful because it's, it's a pretty well sealed case. And additionally, it's really not as fast if you're comparing to a very experienced cyclist. I, I cycle a few hundred miles a week, usually when it's warm outside. I've been running a lot recently, but usually a couple hundred miles a week. And because of that, uh, even on my mountain bike, I can ride at comparable speeds to the scooter. Um, I can definitely go faster in a sprint, and over distances, I'm not too far off from it, maybe a couple miles an hour slower. So anyways, what do I like about this scooter? Well, it's very convenient. Um, it's the convenience of a bicycle, plus it has a smaller footprint. I mean, let me just do it right here. If I felt like it, I could take this thing, which is already pretty small, unclip it, and fold it down, clip it here, and pick it up with one hand. It's really not that heavy or cumbersome. Uh, and it really stores well. If I had to move, I would be like, oh, maybe I should get rid of my mountain bike and get a new one when I get there so I don't have to load it in my car. Uh, but I would definitely be like, oh, the scooter's no problem. I can just shove it in the car. Um, yeah, it's, it's a big point for it. And if you want to keep your scooter or bicycle or whatever in the office, uh, I would think that if you've got an employer that is very hooked on aesthetics, you'd probably be better off with the scooter because you can just slide it under your desk and nobody will even see it all day. It's nice in that regard to be able to get to the office <laughs> uh, not sweaty. It's not something you can do on a bicycle. When I ride my bike, even if I ride it easy, I sweat a bit and I have helmet marks on my hair. It's not as luxurious of an experience. Realistically, if you don't mind potentially screwing it up, you can ride a freaking, you can ride in a suit on a scooter. Uh, to work and you'll arrive there looking fresh and clean um, When I ride my bicycle, I, I definitely that is not the case Realistically for the benefits of the scooter. It's pretty economical. Um, I Definitely stretch the limits of this scooters range uh, usually I get home with about 30% battery left and That's because I ride really like 20 miles a day uh, just bopping around town and commuting uh, but yeah, you you really can get decent range if your commute's only a couple miles on this and the electricity that it uses is really pretty cheap. I saw something online the other day and that was calculating how far you could go on various modes of transportation and uh, I looked at it and it actually looked pretty accurate. Uh, you could ride from LA to Dubai on this thing at the current price of electricity for about $20 in electricity. It It's pretty astounding actually. So this thing is not going to cost you a lot other than the purchase price. And one thing of note that you should probably think about if you're looking at an electric scooter though, is that people do give this a second look. Uh, when I, let me do it real quick. When I like, let's say hop off of this and I walk into a storefront with it, just like this, 
uh, people give it a weird look. So generally, people are going to notice an electric scooter a lot more than they notice a bicycle. For me, I really don't care, but if you don't want people to give you a weird look when you walk into the office sometimes, or if you're like locking it up outside, you don't want people to give it a second glance, maybe if you live somewhere where theft is common, um, maybe a run-down, ugly-looking bicycle would be the better move. Uh, as I stated while I was on the bicycle, road imperfections are annoying on this. I mean, look, this is a pretty smooth street for the bicycle, but it's kind of jostling me. Uh, this is going to be scary. Yep. Oh, and that's a pretty small hole. <laughs> and that was a little dicey and scary. And honestly, this street is about as bumpy as I would even want to ride. There would be some... Ooh. Ooh. Like, that was quite scary. But yeah, ultimately, this thing is fun. I mean, I'm going 19 miles an hour right now, down a little trail, uh, without any effort. It feels like I am Marty McFly on his hoverboard. It feels like I am surfing and I just caught a wave. It's a really cool, unique feeling to have something that is the footprint of a bicycle that flies along like this. Uh, as a kid, this would have been like a dream toy. Um, but now, as an adult, it's a toy I get to use every day, so I don't really feel guilty about spending however much you spend on one of these. Um, I think it was about $750 retail, but I had a very good discount from Amazon because uh, I bought it used. I really don't feel guilty riding this or having spent the money on it because it really is shaping up to be an excellent tool for me. Not only is it a convenient commuting tool that I use when I just generally don't want to get sweaty. It's also an amazing alternative to my car. Uh, as we all know, gas recently went up to like $4, $5 a gallon. And I really only have to fill up once a month, maybe once every month and a half, because usually for most trips, unless I am literally picking up pizzas, like weird shaped objects or super heavy objects, I can just take this. It saves me a ton of gas money, and to be honest, I, I'm starting to wonder if after 500 miles with probably about 200 of those being car replacement miles, um, if, if this thing over time is going to pay itself off. Uh, so it's not just gonna give me convenience, it might also save me money, because every time I go to the grocery store now, I just take a backpack and I take this. Or every time I, you know, go to work on a Sunday, I used to do that drive, but now I just take this because it is legitimately as fast as driving uh, five and a half miles from a suburb outside of Boston into Boston. It's quite impressive to me how much utility this thing offers. And I think that's really the big surprise about electric scooting to me is I rode my bike for so many years because the amount of utility offered at such a low price. Uh, but this might even in some ways be better because now, I, a lot of the time I wouldn't ride my bike on a really hot or a really cold day because you don't want to ride and get super sweaty or you don't want to ride all bundled up which also traps sweat and is just an uncomfortable experience with this i can bundle up as much as i want or on a super hot day i'm not putting out effort so i'm not going to get sweaty so i use it more in instances when i would have used my car uh, so just keep that in mind it really is an amazing tool for that and the only thing it can really do that a car can't do is like tow super heavy things or transport really weird shaped things uh, or go in the rain. This this can't go in the rain. So keep that in mind. Maybe even though Seattle is a super popular place for electric scooting, you know, if you want to use this every day of the year, you know, an electric scooter, a bicycle might be better than an electric scooter if you live somewhere super rainy like Seattle. That's what I'm getting at. Um, but yeah, I think that wraps up the scooter portion of this video. Basically, it's, it's a really super fun, uh, super economical, uh, but maybe not quite as practical alternative to a bicycle that if you're looking at it to use as a car replacement, you might find you get more use out of it than a bicycle because you're more real willing to ride it. At least that's been the case for me. And with gas nearing $5 a gallon, I don't know if there's ever been a better time to buy a little electric toy that also happens to, you know, save you gas money. So calculate how much gas you'd have to not use to pay off this thing and maybe it will be cheaper than you actually expected if you wanted an electric scooter. So in conclusion to this video, um, a bike and an electric scooter can be an amazing commuting tool 
and they can both be incredibly fun and they can both really improve your life uh, to switch away from a car out depending on where you live. Wow, these are really sharp finds. All right, so I don't end up stabbed by vines. I'm going to be walking the conclusion of this. So in conclusion, an electric scooter or a bicycle can offer you a really good alternative to driving your car to work. Um, they're going to save you a lot of money. They're going to be much easier to transport. If you work in a downtown, you're not gonna have to worry about parking at all. You can really just bring them inside to most offices, I would say. Um, a bicycle is gonna get you in shape. An electric scooter is going to give you more convenience without the fitness benefits, of course, and it's going to be a little more expensive. A uh, bicycle, you can really replace everything on. An electric scooter might be a bit more expensive and require a bit more experience with, I don't know, uh, tools and uh, electric equipment in general to replace certain parts. It's not quite as user friendly, uh, but they both offer incredible alternatives. I'll leave it up to you to decide which one is right for you. Uh, personally, as a long-term and dare I say semi-hardcore year-round bike commuter in Boston, um, I've been really happy with this electric scooter and it has fit, I would say like 70% of my needs. Of course, rainy days are still a challenge for it. Um, super bumpy roads are still a challenge for it. So if I need to go somewhere that, you know, is a little off the beaten path, the bicycle is gonna be the tool. Uh, and additionally, I don't think this is going to last as long as the bicycle. I'm hoping that I can ride this thing three or 4,000 miles before I have to replace it. Whereas the bicycle, I've got about 2,000 miles on it. And I know for a fact, uh, based on my bicycles that have 10,000 miles on them, that every part on my bicycle is, well, most parts on my bicycle are going to be fine probably at eight to 10,000 miles. Um, and when I do have to replace those parts, they're gonna be a heck of a lot cheaper. But anyways, this is Bye Bike Boston. And thank you for watching if you got this far. Um, as you know, from many other YouTube videos, liking and subscribing and commenting and just viewing as much of this video as possible is terrific for the algorithm. So if you've gotten this far, I really appreciate it. And anyways, that's it. Uh, thanks for viewing and I'll catch you on the next one.